and uh, the one on this is a DUI driver. We believe it's uh, that pickup there. It's a little bit uh, difficult to confirm it because there's no units behind it at this point. Uh, we just have a CHP helicopter overhead uh, trailing it. There are some units on the freeway. We have seen them, but they don't have their lights and sirens on right now. Uh, so it looks like they may be trying to get either in position behind the vehicle, like that CHP unit that you see there, uh, or they're just kind of trailing this guy uh, in hopes that he's eventually just going to come to a stop and they can take him into custody at that point. Uh, unclear how many people may be in the vehicle, but we are uh, going about uh, 80 miles an hour or so here northbound on the 405 in Long Beach. Ileana, take me through this. So Newport Beach, was he on surface streets or she on surface streets when this started? Most likely, yes. Uh, it would have been uh, on surface streets uh, in Newport Beach. Newport Beach police uh, would have uh, likely spotted uh, something that just uh, seemed off to them, maybe a little bit of a reckless uh, driving situation, or it could have even been a DUI checkpoint, and then this person took off. And that is when uh, we believe it was actually Duke, which is the Orange County Sheriff's helicopter that may have been overhead initially until uh, the CHP was able to get their aircraft over it. And uh, so they're the ones that are trailing it now. Uh, but at this point, I still haven't seen any uh, ground units directly behind it. But again, they are in the area. So this very well could just be a surveillance mode situation where they're going to follow along with the helicopter only in hopes that he'll just slow his roll and he'll think that this is no longer a pursuit and, and may even drive home and they can take him to custody at that point. Ileana, when, let's qualify when we talk about that they're in a surveillance mode here. The fear that people could be put in harm's way by this driver. Of course, he's already driving recklessly for the most part on the 405 heading north. And that is what they're doing right now, just sort of trying to maintain. Exactly, just trying to maintain uh, the situation as is, because for the most part, he is staying in one lane. We've noticed he's right now in the carpool lane and just kind of maintaining his speed. And even though these are high speeds, 80 miles an hour, uh, at this time of the night on our open freeways, it's really not that out of the ordinary to see vehicles traveling at these speeds. So if he just continues to do what he's doing now, they're okay with that. They don't need to necessarily get any uh, uh, units uh, with their lights and sirens behind him. But if he starts to drive recklessly again, if let's say he starts crossing over all lanes, driving on the right shoulder, dangerous uh, uh, driving of that nature, they could very well uh, get some units behind him and go in a full pursuit mode again. Well, that was my question. Are there units behind him or no? It's just simply from overhead. Yeah, so they're in the area, and you see one there actually on there the uh, uh, sure. on the right side of the screen, but you'll notice his lights and sirens are not on. Of course, we wouldn't be able to hear the sirens, uh, but I can tell you that uh, at least uh, from what we can see visually, the lights are not on, in hopes that this guy won't realize that there's a unit behind him, and he'll just continue to drive normally, perhaps drive home, drive to a friend's house, just basically drive somewhere where he gets himself out of the vehicle, and they can take him into custody without incident. Where is he right now, Liliana, the driver? So he is still uh, trekking along here in Long Beach northbound on the 405 freeway coming up to Alameda. So we're not far from uh, Long Beach Airport. At this point, uh, the freeway is pretty wide open in both directions. And uh, I am hearing them talk about a possible spike strip. And the reason they can start to think that route is because there is a pattern of his driving. He is staying in one lane on the 405 freeway, so they very well could get up ahead, deploy some spikes, and hopefully he'd run them over, and then his tires would slowly start to deflate, and that could bring things to an end. I would imagine putting a spike strip on the 405 comes with a great deal of difficulty and risk, right? It is incredibly dangerous uh, to the uh, CHP officer that is uh, given that task because he could very well get hit uh, by the driver or even another driver. It, it really is a dangerous situation. And uh, unfortunately, that has happened at times where officers are struck uh, in their attempt to uh, put out a spike strip. So. What I am hearing is that they're going to try to run a traffic break to give those officers a little bit of room to be able to deploy that spike strip. So I'm not going to give the exact location where that's going to happen, just in case uh, the person in the vehicle is listening to our broadcast or a friend is listening to the broadcast. That way he doesn't get a heads up about it. But after he passes that point, I can point it out. But for now, continuing northbound on the 405 freeway coming up to the city of Carson. Pretty much maintaining the same speeds. He's pretty much staying in that carpool lane. As you said, just a, there we go now, moving over. Uh, and they are 
moving it a little bit, Eliana. Certainly he knows that they're still following him. Yeah, now they are in a full pursuit mode, Robert, with uh, those uh, black and whites uh, behind him with their lights on as well. So if this guy didn't know he was uh, in a pursuit, he sure knows it now uh, with uh, the units uh, right on his tail. Of course, you still have the helicopter overhead. And in a situation like this, uh, it actually does help other drivers who are on the road to know that this is a vehicle that is involved in a pursuit. When they were behind him, this guy flies right past you at what is now 100 miles an hour and you just think it's a crazy driver you don't realize that this is a guy who's uh, in the yeah. middle of a pursuit but now that these ground units are behind them with their lights and sirens on it lets everybody else on the road know that it's time to move over and get out of the way as we as we update you here we are talking about a suspected DUI driver male or female we don't know can't confirm who else may be in that truck started in Newport Beach according to Ileana Moreno and has now been on the 405 Chancel Beach as it heads into the Carson area here the 405 looks pretty open and now this driver seems to be very much aware that the CHP is behind following behind and is looks like sort of moving back and forth Ileana trying to decide what the next move is going to be but bringing our viewers back into something that I think is going to be a very unique thing to witness if in fact we do witness it a spike strip on the 405 is that still what you're hearing as a possibility. Yeah, I did hear them uh, still talking about it. it is a possibility, but it might not be now that he's transitioning to the 110 freeway. Uh, so uh, he seemed to be fully committed to that 405, uh, but looks like he uh, may be transitioning here. I, I think this is going to put him on the southbound uh, side, but we'll know as soon as he completes the transition. So uh, we're still in Carson. Additional units of the CHP getting behind him right at the uh, interchange here between the 405 and the, 10, uh, the 110 freeway. And again, he's still completing the transition, so I'll be able to confirm the direction as soon as he finishes it. But I have a feeling this is going to drop him onto the southbound uh, 110 freeway here in Carson. You know, when you look at this, not only are you concerned about someone who's trying to evade the police, but this is someone who is impaired, and you have to be very concerned about those people on the road, even though the 405 pretty much open, Ileana. But as you know, anything can happen, and it is a Friday night in Los Angeles. As he moves right now, uh, the 110 South, as you said. Yeah, 110 South uh, here in Carson, uh, just south of the 405 now. And the 110 uh, will eventually come to an end uh, here in the San Pedro area. It becomes Gaffey Street. So he's going to have to make a choice uh, when he gets to that point. Uh, but for now, it looks like he's uh, committed here because he's all the way to the left. So this is going to keep him here on the 110 South. I'm hearing the description from the CHP of the driver. They're saying that it is a man. Uh, so they're okay. saying that it is a man, and they're not seeing anyone else. So at this point, uh, we believe it is a solo occupant here uh, that is continuing to uh, try to evade the California Highway Patrol after evading Newport Beach police, uh, apparently, for uh, DUI. If this driver, now we know it's a man, Ileana, moves back into Long Beach, I would imagine also that there are some serious roadblocks that could possibly be in the way. Are there, in fact, you know, going to be due to the Long Beach Grand Prix that there will po uh, be some type of closures that could end this pursuit? Yeah, if he heads towards Long Beach, I was actually at the Grand Prix uh, earlier today, and I can tell you that there are a lot of uh, street closures in the area, a lot of uh, places that are coned off. And even though the activities for the day are over, uh, you still have a lot of pedestrian traffic in that area, a lot of people that are uh, just enjoying their night out here on a Friday night, uh, so frequent. They're going to some of the uh, restaurants and bars there in the area, so it is an extremely busy area. And so that, of course, is if he goes towards Long Beach, which is a little bit to our east for now he's still in Carson but he seems to be slowing down a bit so this is really interesting I'm wondering if perhaps uh, he's either lost and is trying to figure out where to go from here or maybe he's running out of gas but we are seeing a big change in the speeds now here only about uh, he had dropped down to about 45 he's picking it up again just a little bit but again at one point we saw 100 miles an hour so this is a big difference Picking up speed again here, and, and we can hope that he does avoid that Long Beach area, specifically as we saw from our David Bigger, who is down there today. There are a lot of people that are gathering in that city this weekend for that major event. And so 
He is right now continuing Ileana on the 110 South. And you, you talk about possibly running out of gas, if that could be the case. What time did this pursuit start? So it's unclear exactly what time it started, but to go from Newport Beach all the way here to Carson, it would take reasonably a good 30 minutes without traffic. So we know it's been at least that long. It's unclear how many uh, minutes he was on surface streets in the Newport Beach area. They, of course, are encrypted, which basically means we can't hear their transmissions on the scanner. So it could have been going on for quite some time before he jumped onto that northbound uh, 405 freeway where it transitioned to the California Highway Patrol. And then at that point, we could hear it so we've been following it pretty much from the Los Alamitos area from the 405 and the 605 and then we uh, followed it to the 110 where he jumped onto that 110 south and he's getting that much closer to that area of the freeway where the 110 comes to an end at Gaffey uh, which is a major street here through the San Pedro area lots of homes lots of businesses lots of people out and about uh, on a Friday night so that of course uh, is very concerning uh, but there's also the chance he may just simply jump off the 110 and hop right back on and go north uh, he's getting very close to where he's gonna have to make that choice and Ileana our Simon desk just informs us that the chase actually began at 1104 so we are not very long in and perhaps he has uh, some gas ready to go that this could go on for a while what we have seen right now is just the 405 and the 110 any other freeways involved that's all that we've uh, seen while we've been overhead 405 and now the 110 freeway. And considering that this started in Newport Beach, Robert, uh, most of our pursuits tend to return to an area that the driver is familiar with. A lot of the time, it's in the area where the pursuit began. Uh, so if he has any intention of getting back to Newport Beach, he is uh, a long ways from home. Uh, we're just uh, uh, entering the Wilmington area here. Again, where uh, all of the refineries are here just off of the freeway. We're approaching Anaheim Street. And again, this is where the freeway is going to come to an end and eventually we'll end up uh, here in, in the port of Los Angeles. Angeles. Lots of big rigs there, lots of slow-moving vehicles uh, that me, he may have to contend with if he keeps going south. Any indication from what the chatter that you're hearing that he is speaking to any agency involved here? At this point, what we've been hearing on the scanner is uh, simply his description. And the only reason we got that was that one of the CHP units got very close, uh, close enough so that he could see him and was able to share that description with uh, his fellow officers. Uh, but we really don't have any other information of the driver beyond that uh, in terms of whether he may be in communication with officers. Uh, but one thing that my pilot, uh, James Pollard, just noticed was that one of the CHP cruisers actually ran up ahead. And that may actually be the unit that's going to deploy that spike strip uh, again they they were thinking about doing it on the 405 because he had been pretty committed to that 405 north but then he made that transition on that 110 south so any thought of putting that spike on the 405 uh, freeway died once he got on the 110 so they can definitely try it now now that he's uh, on the 110 south when was the last time you witnessed a spike strip yeah. on a freeway Ileana uh, so I have seen it done it's uh, usually they they try to pick an area that uh, they, they usually have like a curve, uh, let's say, uh, just so that they have a little bit of a, a blind curve, basically, so that the, uh, the driver won't see the spike strip. But what uh, we are seeing is that that unit of the CHP did run up ahead to try to deploy it. So we'll see if they're successful in their attempts. Uh, but it is very dangerous because if that officer is out of his vehicle, when uh, the pursuit vehicle comes by, he always runs the risk. He or she always runs the risk of getting uh, run over. And of course, uh, we, we hope not to see something like that. But he is now on Gaffey. Uh, 110 freeway came to an end and he's now headed southbound Gaffey. Okay, and, and where could this road take him? Into a residential uh, area? Could it take another freeway as he really speeds up right now? Yeah, so uh, from this point going forward, his freeway options are gone. Uh, in order for him to get back up to a freeway, he would uh, have to go back north uh, to try to pick up the uh, 110 freeway. Uh, he could also try to do the 710, but we're a long ways from that. So this is going to be uh, strictly surface streets uh, going forward. A lot of homes in this area. Uh, when he was on Gaffey, there were a lot of businesses there too. But now that we're on a smaller street, this is uh, 8th Street, uh, we're going to see more uh, residential uh, type communities coming up. So uh, perhaps this is an area that is familiar to him. Uh, 
kind of bottomed out there just a little bit. I actually m think he might be blacked out, too. I hadn't noticed that before, but now that he's uh, tapping on the brakes, I am seeing his brake lights, but once when he's not on the brakes, I'm not seeing any lights at all. So uh, he may be blacked out here. It's an older model pickup, uh, blue in color, uh, with, again, a possible DUI driver out of Newport Beach, now all the way in San Pedro. Is this the moment, Ileana, that the CHP and what other, uh, other law enforcement is involved says, you know what, got to back off now. We are in a residential neighborhood. Lives are at risk. There are people potentially on the sidewalk. We go now into surveillance mode. That could very well be it, Robert, but it may come to an end before that. He go. is pulling over here. I'm not seeing the driver door open. But the night's on there of the police helicopters overhead. I'm going to ask uh, Jim if he could just scoot just a touch so that we can look at that driver door just in case uh, he opens it. Oh, no, but he's going to take off yet again. So interesting uh, move there uh, just to pull over there for a second. I wonder if he was just checking his directions uh, to try to figure out where to go from here. Maybe he doesn't know this area as well as we might have thought. Uh, but to get back to your question, uh, Robert, they could very well just. Stay with us, Ileana is well, staying overhead. overhead. Uh, Ileana, with, with all of what you're looking at right now, where do you see the CHP? How far behind him are they? Yeah, I'm going to try to widen out without losing him. There you go. Uh, okay. So not right on his tail, giving him just a touch of room, uh, but uh, he can clearly see them behind him. There's no question about that. Uh, again, this is a possible DUI driver, a pursuit that started uh, in Newport Beach about uh, 25 minutes ago now, has made its way all the way to San Pedro after jumping on two of our freeways, both the 405 and the 110 freeway, and continues now here through uh, residential streets, but fortunately at slightly slower speeds. And Ileana, did you see right that there, I'm sure our viewers noticed as well, the CHP patrol unit actually stopped for that red light despite the the lights flashing and perhaps now that is when they are going to be backing off here yeah that very well uh, could have been uh, the time when they're dropping out and then uh, also that this guy had run the red so uh, the difference uh, is that officers always have to clear that intersection they can't risk uh, hitting another vehicle in, the, in their attempts to uh, continue to chase this guy. So they're always going to be just a little bit delayed uh, behind him uh, because, uh, of course, they don't want to run a red, they don't want to run a stop sign and potentially uh, cause any harm to anyone. But he is actually coming to a full-on stop here. We're at Beacon and 7th, uh, the CHP right behind him, and he turned on his lights as soon as he got behind him, slowing down a lot. Maybe he's uh, decided uh, to call it a night here Had at enough. the red. And CHP officers with their guns drawn. Didn't look like he ran out of gas. Looks like he just got tired of running. Yeah, it seems like after this 30-minute uh, chase or so, uh, he's decided to bring things to an end here in San Pedro, just off of 7th and Beacon, uh, right next to a park in a, an area where we're really not seeing much in the way of vehicle traffic. As my pilot, Jim, brings the helicopter around, we'll be able to get a better look here at the driver, who appears to be fully complying at this point. He threw the keys out. That's the first thing he threw out, so there's no chance he can jump back in and take off. But here you go, walking back in the direction of the officers. They're going to give him commands. They're going to handcuff him, and then whenever they feel comfortable, they will approach the vehicle as well just to make sure that nobody else is inside. This could have been far worse, far more dangerous, and we had a pursuit that began in Newport Beach that made its way through Seal Beach, Long Beach, and now ending up here in Los Angeles. This is a suspected DUI driver being taken into custody. This is the second pursuit that we have seen in just the last few hours. If you joined us live for the NBC4 News at 6 o'clock, we were overhead with a, a Kia Soul that Ileana was telling me before we went on air. And as you look at this picture, we can tell you if you joined us for that pursuit, Ileana, you've got an age on that driver of the Kia Soul. 
Yeah, we had that earlier pursuit that you were talking about, Robert, and incredibly, that young man, if I can call him a young man, uh, because he was only 15 years old uh, and was uh, behind the wheel of a possible stolen car and led officers on a very lengthy chase through South Los Angeles. Uh, this case here is also another uh, man, but in this case, again, it was a DUI suspect, uh, and uh, fortunately, this uh, pursuit ended here without incident on streets in San Pedro. You see that they're searching the car right now, Ileana here, and the agency involved is only CHP, as this was a freeway pursuit. They yeah, bring him back to I Newport Beach now? Correct, yeah, so this was uh, originally out of Newport Beach, uh, but uh, it was handed over to the California Highway Patrol since it was on the freeways uh, for most of the length of the chase, which was a good 30 minutes. So because it was on the freeways, the CHP are the police of our freeways here in California, so they were best equipped to continue to follow this guy all the way from Newport Beach to San Pedro. Really not too much in the way of close calls, but a really fast moving pursuit that made its way at the termination of it here on a surface streets, which could have been very dangerous on a Friday night. Uh, but fortunately, he decided that it was time to pull over and he is now in custody. And as we do with NBC4 News, we really do follow these pursuits even when they end to try and give you the information about those involved. And as we stay overhead, as a service to our viewers to try and be a community alert to let people know about this pursuit, to let people know there is a pursuit that is potentially heading into their neighborhood and to let them know exactly what they may be in for. But what we have right here now is a pursuit that has ended with a sudden surrender, if you will. Correct, Ileana? Just a sudden surrender by a suspected DUI driver now taken into custody and is going to have a drive back to where it all began somewhere in Newport Beach after going on quite a joy ride, a joy ride that lasted just about a half hour. Yeah, about half an hour all the way from Newport Beach to San Pedro. And at the end of it all, it just appeared like he just had enough and simply pulled over. He immediately threw the keys out, which is always the first thing that you are instructed to do if you are in a pursuit. That way it's a guarantee that the car can't take off anymore. And he quickly surrendered uh, to the California Highway Patrol. He's now in the back of a squad car. They cleared the vehicle and made sure there were no other occupants and they did not find anybody else inside of the vehicle. And Ileana, we want to thank you for taking us through this pursuit as you do and do it so well. If you're heading on the 405 right now, looks pretty open. Let's go to The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Have a good weekend.